Hi everyone, welcome back. Let's write some more leak code today. Today we are solving check if array is sorted and rotated. I will go over two ways to solve this problem, but we'll only go over the coding for the optimal solution. If you are only interested in the optimal solution, then feel free to skip to the timestamp. So the problem states that we are given an array of nums and we want to return true if the array was originally sorted in non-decreasing order and then rotated by some number of positions, including zero. So meaning that even if the array is not rotated at all, then we can still return true otherwise if it's not in a rotated pattern then we want to return false and we also need to account for the fact that there may be duplicates in the original array so if we look at these examples we can see that for this array it is rotated three positions this array is not a rotated array and this array is not rotated at all or rotated zero positions so we return true for example three and one and false for example two so how can we solve this problem one way that we can solve this problem is first we can sort the array that we are given and then we will compare the indexes to see if they are equal for all the index and if it's not equal then we will start at a new index and then we will keep doing that until we have tried starting at all the indexes so we can i can go through this example and we don't actually have to uh flip the ar the elements in the array but i just did it for a uh, visualization purposes but in reality we can just start at a new index so compare three and one it's not the same so then we'll just start at four four and one not the same so we'll start at five five and one not the same so then now we start at one one is equal to one two is equal to two and then since two is the end we go back to the beginning three is equal to three four is equal to four and five is equal to five so now these array are equal so we can return true for this example and if we have tried all the indexes and none of the arrays match the sorted array, then we can return false. The time complexity of this approach would be all of n squared because we will have to try starting at all of the indexes. And at each index, we may need to compare up to the length of the array. So the time would be all of n squared, where n is the number of elements in the array. So there's actually a more efficient way to solve this problem. And I can go over that one right now. A faster way to solve this problem is we can just compare each element to the right of it. And if the right element is less than the element that we are at, then we should increment the switch by one. And when we get to the last element, we want to compare to the element in the front. And if the element in the front is less than the element in the end, then we also want to increment the switch by one. And if the switch is ever two or greater, then we can return false. Otherwise, we can return true. So let's go over these two examples. So we look at three and compare to four. Four is greater than three, so we move over. Five is greater than four, so we move over. One is less than five, so we increment the switch to one. And two is greater than one, so we move over. Now we compare two and three. Three is greater than two, so we don't need to increment the switch. So for this example, the solution will be true. Now we look at this example. One is less than two, so we increment the switch by one. Now move over, compare one and three. Three is greater than one, so move over. Four and three, four is greater than three. So now we compare four to two, two is less than four. So we increment the switch again. And since the switch is equal to two, then we can return false. The time complexity of this problem would be O of N, where N is the number of elements in the array because we would have to iterate through the array. And the space complexity would be O of one because we are not using any extra space. So now let's get to the coding part. <laughs> so first we can set the switch variable to zero and we can write our for loop for i in range length of nums minus one so if nums of i is greater than the next character which would be nums of i plus one then we will increment the switch by one and if at any time the switch is equal to two then we can just return false and when we get to the end, we need to compare the last character and the first character. And if the first character is smaller, then we need to increment the switch again. So switch plus one. And in the very end, we will just return if switch is less than two. If it's less than two, return true. If it is two or greater, then we return false. All right, let's see if it works. Okay, perfect. Hope you guys find this helpful. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it down in the comment section. And I hope to see you all again soon.